Good afternoon. My name is Gautam Kaur and I am an associate professor with Postima Business School. I belong to the city of Delhi and I had my initial education in St. Columba School, uh, which has been one of Delhi's leading schools for more than half a century. After completing my schooling, I tried for engineering, but at that time, in the first attempt, I got textile, and at that and at that, there were not many people then who were available for counselling on what discipline to take. And uh, since I wasn't very enamoured of textile, I did one year at Stephens and then tried IIT again and got mechanical engineering in Delhi. And after completing my engineering, I did a short stint at Escorts Motorcycle, which made me realize that uh, engineering career is not for me. Actually, what happened, if you to be on the shop floor in the engineering company at 8 in the morning, you had to catch the bus at 7, which means that uh, being there at the bus stop at such early hours in the months of December, January, the winters being what they are, was not quite what I had looked forward to. At the same time, the management fields were emerging, and so I tried, applied for MBA courses, and uh, luckily I got into IIMA, after which I took to marketing, and I've been in a hardcore FMC marketing for almost 30 years. About 20 years ago, I shifted to academics. The transition was relatively simple and I've been in academics for nearly 20 years. I began my career with the FI Business School. I was there for almost 15 years. Then another two, uh, two years with NDIM. And for the last three years, I've been with First Time Business School and I'm enjoying academics very much. It's very, very engrossing as you keep yourself engaged with youngsters all the time. Uh, talking about philosophy and styles of leadership, I just like to begin by saying that uh, philosophy of leadership, of course, remains largely the same because uh, with the person, but the style is, uh, is contextual and may change depending on the demands of the situation. Uh, I have firmly believed and I've always practiced it that a good leader is one who creates a situation in which what is best in his team always comes out. He creates learning situation. He creates a situation of trust and confidence where people can experiment with the new ideas without any fear of failure. Uh, let me push this point a uh, little forward. Conventionally, in the uh, corporate sector, we have known the top-down approach where the top manager, call him zonal manager, call him regional manager, passes the instructions down to the sales team. But I have, uh, but I have actually work with reversing the process. Let me explain. Uh, it was, I think, when I was in early 80s, when I was posted in Chandigarh as the regional sales manager of Golden Tobacco Company, I reversed the situation by telling my sales rep, I worked with an inverted pyramid. And I told my salesmen covering the various markets of Punjab, Yamacha, JK, etc., etc., that look, I am sitting in my office in Chandigarh, whereas you are the people who are actually in the field for 30 days a month. Now, you tell me what has to be done. And I will give you the, uh, the budgets and all other resources for that. Now, initially, this was a little difficult because they had not been used to the situation. But with the trust and confidence that they sensed in our approach, they began experimenting with new ideas. They were, of course, initially hesitant. They were, of course, uh, apprehensive that what happened in case they failed. But I told them that uh, never be afraid of failure because failure is the next stepping stone to success. And slowly, all that was inside them. 
to knowledge of the market, to knowledge of dealers, etc. started coming out. Overall, they gained confidence in the boss. Our volumes went up and my style was very well appreciated. So this is a kind of style that I've always had where you create conditions in which people feel confident to try out whatever they have already inside themselves. When I talk to students during the interviews, one constant feedback that comes is that the faculty at first time I, is IIT and IIM faculty and therefore the delivery of academics has to be very good. This is undoubtedly true. But the fact remains there is much more to first time I, than is delivery and the faculty. What we are trying to do here is to inculcate and the entire ethos of IIMA. We are trying to bring nurture our students in an IIMA culture. Uh, I just like to emphasize two aspects about it. One is the learning part. How do students like in IIMA? We uh, the students here also learn entirely on their own. In IIMA, the students discuss the case among themselves while the faculty is merely acting like a reflector. As a result of interaction among themselves, the students acquire the knowledge in marketing, finance, IT, etc. And once they have gone through their process, this process, they have the ownership of it. This is exactly the process that we are trying to follow out here. It does take some time for the students to relate to this new mode of learning, but over a period of time, they begin to appreciate the nuances and the subtleties and how they develop their own confidence in the process. The second aspect which I would like to mention about IIMA, which we are trying to uh, inculcate her also, is that we do not help students. It may sound funny and I'm repeating it, but we do not help students. We, however, help them to help themselves a lot. Now, some of you may just wonder that this seems to be a little clever semantics. No, there's a lot of difference between the two. If you were, if you were to merely help the students all the time, we will be perpetuating the dependency that they have known in their student career up till now. And what will they do once they pass out? So we stand by them as they go through the process of learning and discovering things for themselves. And once having discovered from themselves, this stays with them all their lives. These are the, there are many, many more things that I like to expand upon. But because of paucity of time, I would like to confine myself to these two major aspects. Well, talking about placements, I'm very glad to say that uh, First Time has a very satisfactory record of having 100% placements in the last so many years. In fact, uh, I'm equally glad to say that uh, this placement is spread across large sectors of the corporate, say, in finance, marketing, uh, <clears throat> HR, IT, and we are placing our students in the top echelons of the corporate, top banks, top financial companies, top FMD companies, top IT companies. I would just like to take a minute to clear some misconception and misnomer that some students tend to have uh, regarding placements. I met many students who somehow feel, somehow think that uh, having got into a B-school, placement is automatic and will happen by itself. Uh, I'm afraid this is a big misconception. Things don't work out that way. And therefore we take a lot of care right from the day the moment they join the B-school, that we place emphasis on their domain, on their presentation skills, on GDs, on mock interviews, on, and we insist a lot 
that before going for a company, they do a lot of homework regarding the company. Ultimately, it is this investment that ensures that we have 100% placement over the last so many years and I'm sure we'll continue to maintain this trend. A year's COVID has had a major impact on education. Because the colleges were closed, the reach of education was certainly became very wide and very distant. Thanks to Zoom, virtual uh, education reached almost all the corners of the country. Deep and distant corners were available to children. Uh, while this has been a positive step, there are certain issues that have major cause for concern. Uh, one very obvious thing that has happened is the quality of education has declined. Uh, I've been interviewing students for admission for last so many years and after COVID, I can see palpably obvious that the quantity of education, education leaves much to be desired. There have been instances when some students could not tell me the difference between equity and debentures. The quality of examination has been a major cause for concern. So these are some of the poor things that are a concern, the negative effects of COVID. No doubt that uh, in the uh, West and in other countries, virtual and distant education is certainly gaining momentum. We've all heard of uh, massive open online courses, but uh, unfortunately in India, we do not seem to be having that kind of an infrastructure and we have a long way to go in that. It, the COVID also shows that we, at this point of time and in foreseeable future, it will be very difficult to, be made, uh, to replace the human element. The need for a teacher will always be there. It will be a long time before we can replace the human element by virtual education.